The purpose of the Boston Diagnostic Aphasia Examination is to provide a full assessment of an aphasic patient's language functioning with specific reference to the classic anatomically based aphasia syndromes. This exam allows for a quantitative and qualitative evaluation of language. The Boston Diagnostic Aphasia Examination, also known as the BDAE, can be administered in three different formats, extended, standard, and short. The extended version offers a more probing evaluation of particular language functions within each area of testing. The standard form is most closely related to older versions of the BDAE, and the short form provides the clinician with a comprehensive but brief sampling of the performances necessary for an informed quantitative assessment. The short form takes 40 to 60 minutes to administer and only includes a select few subtests. The BDAE is divided into five subsections conversational or expository speech, auditory comprehension, oral expression, reading, and writing. There is also an additional apraxia assessment. Within each of the subsections, there are multiple subtests included, adding up to more than 50 subtests. For our purposes, we will be demonstrating how to administer parts of the BDAE short form. The BDAE includes a variety of testing materials, including a comprehensive examiner's manual. Other materials include the Boston Diagnostic Aphasia Examination Booklet, the Standard Form and Short Form Stimulus Cards, the Short Form Record Booklet, the Boston Naming Test, a training DVD, and a box for storage. Michelle is a 71-year-old female who recently suffered from a left hemisphere cerebrovascular accident four days prior. She has just been moved to the rehabilitation floor of the hospital, and this is the first time the speech-language pathologist is seeing Michelle. The physician documented that Michelle is expressing associated signs of aphasia, which include anomia, agrammatism, agraphia, and alexia. She is expressing difficulty remembering the names of objects and people, displaying telegraphic speech, specifically characterized by pauses and omissions of grammatical words, and difficulty with reading and writing. Michelle has had high blood pressure and high cholesterol, which is likely to be the cause of her CVA, but is otherwise a healthy adult. She lives with her husband, Matthew, in a retirement home, and they have three children who visit frequently. Prior to retirement, Michelle worked as a lawyer. English is their primary language spoken. Conversational or expository speech. For our purposes, we will be administering the picture description portion of the first subtest. Okay, tell me everything you see going on in this picture. Water and four. And stool and not okay. Okay. Anything else? And dish. Good job. Auditory comprehension. For our purposes, we will be administering the complex ideational material task. Now I'm going to ask you some simple yes or no questions. Will a cork sink in water? No. Can you use a hammer to pound nails? Yes. Will a stone sink in water? Yes. 
Is a hammer good for cutting wood? Um, no. I'm going to read you a, sto a short story, and then I will ask you some questions about it. Are you ready? Yes. Mr. Jones had to go to New York. He decided to take a train. His wife drove him to the station, but on the way they had a flat tire. However, they arrived at the station just in time for him to catch the train. Did Mr. Jones miss his train? No. Was Mr. Jones going to New York? No. Did he get to the station on time? Yes. Was he on his way home from New York? Yes. I will read you another one. Ready? A customer walked into a hotel carrying a coil of rope in one hand and a suitcase in the other. The hotel clerk asked, pardon me, sir, but will you tell me what that rope is for? Yes, replied the man. That's my fire escape. I'm sorry, sir, said the clerk, but all guests carrying their own fire escapes must pay in advance. Was the customer carrying a suitcase in each hand? Yes. Was the clerk suspicious of this guest? No. Was the customer carrying something unusual in one hand? No. Did the clerk trust this guest? Yes. Okay, good. Oral expression. For our purposes, we will be administering the automatized sequences and responsive naming tasks. Automatized sequencing. Can you tell me the days of the week starting with Sunday? Monday. Tuesday. Wednesday. What comes after Wednesday? Friday. And that's the end of the week? Yes. Okay. Now can you count to 21 for me? Starting with the number 1. 2. 3. 4. 5. 7. 8. 9. And 10. 11. Twelve and thirteen. Is that it? What comes after thirteen? Seventeen. Anything else? What are we counting to? Twenty one. You're at 17 right now. 21. Okay. Good job. Responsive naming. Now I'm going to ask you some simple questions. Ready? Mm -hmm. What do you tell time with? Block. What do you do with a razor? Mm -hmm. You don't know? Okay. What do you do with soap? Hand um, wash. Okay. What do you do with a pencil? Mm. Bright. Okay. And what do we cut paper with? Loser. Okay, good job. Reading. For our purposes, we will be administering the word identification, picture word matching. Okay, now I want you to point to the word that describes the object, okay? So what is this a picture?
picture of from these four words. What about this picture? Okay, and this picture? And the last picture. Okay, good job. Scoring complex ideational material. Most of the subtests simply require the clinician to add up the number of correct responses and to divide by the total to obtain a raw score. In the case of complex ideational material, both the A and the B questions must be correct to gain one point of credit for each numbered pair. Here, the client got three out of six correct. The summary profile of the short form subtest provides a visual profile performance on each of the subtests. The score summary profile displays the raw scores on each line, spaced so that each score falls under its corresponding percentile value. The profile is generated by making a circle over the subject's score on each listed subtest. Connecting these points with lines makes the profile easier to visualize. We can see that the patient's score of a 3 out of 6 was obtained on the line for complex ideational material. Explanations for scoring can be found on page 18 of the record form booklet and on page 36 of the manual. Both the severity rating scale and the profile of speech characteristics sum up essential features in the conversational and expository speech section. The severity rating scale is intended to assess the severity of communicative impairment in aphasic patients, but it is also applicable to other types of speech disorders. Explanations for this scale are found on page 26 of the manual and page 4 of the short form record booklet. The rating scale profile of speech characteristics is intended to bring together in a visually salient form the quantitative scales of the dimensions of aphasia that contribute the most critically to diagnostic classification. Rating scales are used for these variables because there are no satisfactory, objectively scored measures. At the foot of the rating page, the clinician has the opportunity to rate three important dimensions of speech output namely rate, volume, and voice quality, which may be related to the subtype of aphasia and may play a role in collateral diagnosis. Now I'm going to ask you some simple yes or no questions. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to ask you some simple yes or no questions. Will a cork sink in water? <laughs> now I'm going to ask you some simple yes or no questions. Will a cork sink in water? Um, 